Hi everyone, it's Chaos Bank on my YouTube channel. Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today I'll be previewing the West Coast Eagles versus Collingwood. Alright, so how I'm doing this is pretty simple. For those who are doing magpies, hello. And for, the, and for the ones that are new for the, to the channel, I'm watching this and I'm watching this for the first time. Welcome and thank you for watching. Um, please drop a like, please drop a look, comment and a subscribe. It means well to me if you like the videos I'm making. Um, because this, this video that I'm making today, I'll explain how I do a preview. Okay, so when I do previews for Collingwood games, um, I'll talk about the game itself and we'll talk about what tends to happen. So, when I do talk, you know why. Okay, so Collingwood and West, West Coast and Collingwood, it's, it's an away game at Optus Stadium. Big ground, big game, big crowd. Um, the last couple times that we played West Coast, out of four times, it's two and two. Um, if you want to go back to the 2019 and 2018 ones as well, on top of that, um, we beat West Coast in the 2019 in Perth by a point and we beat West Coast by a point this time around. Now I've heard so it's amazing Cox and Will Hosk and Elliot are out and they're training with their VFL boys. Um so i we'll go straight into it and I'll do my top five. Now my top five could be anything but the you know, so match selection, game plan, all this sort of stuff. So, we got labelled Dirty Pies against the West Coast Eagles. Um, that was an elimination final. We went over to Perth. We got smacked the first time up there. And we only, and we won one and two of our trips down to Perth. When we had, to, when we had to walk up in the hub as well for that period of time. Now, Mason Cox performed well, Brody Mindcheck performed well back then, so did Jordan Degori. Uh, since then, there's a little bit of changes to it, but it is what it is at this stage of the season. So, if we win today, um, tomorrow night, we are two and three. And we're in a chance to be near, you know, close enough to be near eight. Um, but I'll, I'll do my top five now. Now, my first one is selection. Um, I would not have dropped Will Hoskin now. I'll, I'll, I'll do a video when I do know about the team selection and all the rest, and I'll pass that up too on my YouTube channel. But... I would not have dropped Will Hoskin out earlier, yes, but that game saved his ass, 14 possessions, playing up the ground as well as a half four flanker, and really pushing up the ground to take some marks. It does get a little bit interesting because of that and the reason why how we were playing at the time. Um, of course it was... Yeah, very interesting indeed. Um, apart from that, I think that was about it. So, oh, I, I wouldn't drop Will Hoskin Alley. If you wanted to drop someone, you could almost drop um, Josh Thomas and play Darcy Cameron. The reason why I would do that is because our selection is crucial to what we needed to do. Um, other than that, I don't think you can argue with that at all. 
obviously Tala Adams is out so we brought in a first gamer Finley McRae is going to make his debut for the pies now the second one that I'm gonna say of that is our game plan can our game plan actually step up to the plate because this is what pisses me off that we don't perform well as a club we perform really well against this team last year we got the job done but this week is a bit of a pain in the ass because we lost games that we should not lose um so I think our game plan can step up, but it is a little bit difficult. Number three is our mid to forward line connection. Every time we go inside 50, we have no fucking idea what we're doing. And this is what so bullshits me and dumbfounds me that we had the best midfield 12 months ago or even more than that. And we had to make unfortunate decisions to get rid of some players. Obviously, the beam situation might hurt us a little bit more. But other than that, you know, our mid to four line connection, when we go inside 50, it's either marked by the opposition or, or we're not doing enough at all during the game. Um, so w w that needs to be tied up as much as possible. So I talk about a selection, I talk about a gameplay, midfield to forward line connection. And number four. Right, number four. I'm gonna bloody say this. Our Ruckman and midfield. Now, this is a real problem because every time Grundy wins the tap, our midfield is just standing there waiting for the ball. And I think that's just a waste. you got to be on the move. If you don't be on the move and run into that space that is inside that clearance, that centre circle, and we can get that ball and get that ball forward and we can look as dangerous. Sometimes we have to be dangerous. All right? Nick Nanuri is a ruckman. Now, with him, it might be harder to win the clearances from it. But if we bring in Darcy Cameron and he plays in that forward line to ruck combination, I think what's going to happen is that we're going to have to half the hit out, hit out to advantage and start halving our centre clearances. If we can just do that, it gives us It, it, it gives us a chance to try and win the game as much as possible. And that's what I want to see. And I want to see piss weak efforts. I want to see players going in hard, getting that ball and really moving that ball on forward as much as possible. I want to see this half, half hearted efforts in, in the midfield when we're just lazy. We can't afford to be lazy. Number five. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna put the pressure on, and I'm gonna say two things: our forward line and defence, and, and defenders. Our defenders is gonna be under a lot of heat. Now I say this why? Because we can. West Coast has got Darling Kennedy and Oscar Allen, the three tools. So we're gonna have to limit their impact a lot in that forward line and cut dry the midfield. They don't like to tackle. That's one thing I've had heard, that they don't like to tackle. There's no effort in them to wanting to put pressure on. The tackling is pretty poor. So if our defenders and our midfields and our forwards can tackle and put pressure on, we should be able to win the game as much as anything. Um, our forward one needs to step up and kick some goals. It's not an excuse. We have to make the most of our opportunities in front of goal. Because if we don't, then the pressure is going to build 
and build and build and West Coast are a team that can take advantage of the situation and they can try and and get the scores on the board. We have to be switched on for four quarters of good footy because we know what this team is like. They don't want to stop. If we are off our game a little bit, and that hurts our chances later on down the track, you know, in the game. Now, my tips and predictions. Look, I'll do a video um, when the ins and outs come out, and I'll do that for you guys. I'm going to say West Coast equals by five points. Um, I'm going to say um, Scott Pendlebury to have 26 possessions and Jordan Degoe to kick a goal to to help the Pies get the job done. I hope you do like this video. Fuck the Eagles. We must win this game. Um, we're labeled as dirty Pies. This time we're not. We've won these close games before against this team. We can do it again. Like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your neighbours. Go to the pies, and I'll see you back with another video shortly. I love you all, and I hope the pies can prove me wrong because I want to be proven wrong. Until next time, bye.